I want to talk about the left hand. Um, one of the, the more difficult things that I had was actually getting this hand and arm at the right proper angles. Uh, for one, for playing, but also for comfort. Uh, I, for some reason, you know, most teachers will tell you to, to pick this instrument up, you want it nice and high, and, you know, your, your elbow nice and high, and your fingers, um, you know, right up at this point. Uh, for some reason, that doesn't work too good for me. Uh, my fingers actually start falling asleep. Something about having my hand above my head, I, I don't know. It's I, maybe something that's unique for me. A little blood pressure, I'm not sure. But anyway, so you'll find that I, I will hold my instrument down a little bit lower uh, than most teachers recommend, only because I, if you can't feel your hand, I can't keep playing. So, you know, sometimes there's the universal rules and then there's something you have to do to adapt uh, to make this instrument playable. So I've had to make that adaptation. Uh, one of my habits that I'm still fighting is keeping that elbow up. It tends to be, you know, when you are relaxed, you want to just kind of keep your elbows down and, and by your sides, and that's where they naturally want to be. But you'll find that's the first part of, of keeping this hand in a good position. The second part is your thumb. Uh, because I played violin, one of my habits was to put my thumb to the side and, and to play. And anyway, it, it will kind of work, but it's not so great. So for those of you who play violin and are switching to cello, um, this is a, you know, you have this nice V. It's very proper for a violin. It's not so great for cello. Uh, everything's at different angles. And so the other thing is if you play guitar, one of the things that I'm very used to is, is a flat thumb. And so I used to have my thumb very flat on, on the back because that's, just kind of naturally how you play guitar. Again, you don't want to be on the side, you don't want to be flat. Basically all I'm going to do is, is take that thumb and I want to rotate. I want to rotate down and you want to think of the contact point is actually the side, not the pad, but you want the side of the thumb. And so with that contact I find my, my angles and, and everything uh, it fixes up my left hand uh, quite well compared to some of the other bad habits that I had before. Uh, I'm sure if there's some you know, better music teachers out there, they might you know, have some really good advice for you. Please follow them. Um, they, they definitely know what they're doing, but this is what's working for me, and I'm going to go with this. Uh, the other one is going to be the, uh, the right hand. So bow holds. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of bow holds out there, but generally we, we follow the French, not so much the German, uh, when we're playing cello. Uh, anyway, YouTube it, you'll find out. Um, but the big thing actually that I, more of a mental map as far as the bow control, it isn't just grab onto the thing and, and start sawing, um, but everything definitely starts with the thumb. And so they always talk classically that you, you know, want to have that bend in the thumb. And then that fits right in here. This is the frog. And then that thumb fits right in there. And you've got everything just kind of hangs over the over the top. So these two fingers in the middle just add a stability. But one of the things that might not be so obvious is the is the bow control. And so you've got your your four directions. And so not only do you have the sawing bowing. I call it sawing when I see people just going like crazy, but there's there's other small articulations going on in the hand. And one of them actually is an exercise that you can do very quickly, is to extend all the fingers down and then back up and down and back up. And so the idea is you're, you're trying to do this without dropping your bow. Uh, it does a few things. One, it, it strengthens the fingers, uh, but it, it also kind of encourages a, a nice loose hold. Um, I had a friend of mine that was always very afraid of me stabbing him with the bow when I was sitting beside him. And I had to reassure him that I'm not gripping onto this so tightly. I mean, I've done it before where I've been in a small little orchestra pit and there's a wall right here and I, I end up hitting the wall with, with the stick. Usually what ends up happening, the stick stops and my hand just keeps on, on going um, because I'm not holding this really all that tight, just tight enough to, to not drop it. 
Um, so you have these articulations up and down, uh, but also you also want to have the articulations with the index finger. So this is another exercise um, where you're you're pushing the bow down, more pressure. This will get you a little more volume with the index finger. So your index finger is, is giving you that pressure. But you also have, if you're playing lighter passages, a little more pianissimo, um, then then you can actually uh, use this little finger here to, to lighten up, give you that really raspy, airy kind of sound. And so get used to get used to that kind of articulation. Um, the other one that, I, that really helped me is there's a lot of different movements to keep this bow straight. Uh, not only do I have to have loose fingers, I have to have you know that that in the wrist and the elbow but what you're trying to do is is get yourself in a, in a position where you know you're just sliding your hand back and forth up and down this stick on and you just place it on each of the strings and so this kind of helps give you a little bit of muscle memory as to where exactly so if I'm playing on my lowest string this this is the the motion that I'll have with the hand on the D string, it picks up a little so I can feel my elbow lifting. Again, you know, my elbow and shoulder are starting to rotate and lift. And then finally, the, the A string, uh, this will probably be the most difficult because now you're really having to, to lift the shoulder and the elbow. Um, you know, speaking to uh, giving you some relief on the shoulder, I might cheat a little bit. Um, probably not the best thing, but a lot of times what I'll do is because I have my instrument on a swivel, I, I can actually kind of swivel the instrument over a bit, you know, especially with a high A string. Um, so my, my shoulder doesn't have to lift up. It, you know, in fact, actually, it's best that you, you keep your shoulders down and you don't want to uh, put any tension on these trapezoids here. So anyway, just certain kind of things that uh, I've kind of discovered over.